All right. Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of the MPDV Coaching Show. Eric Myers, Ryan Lindley. And Ryan, this week we have a booming episode for the holidays. A lot of, a lot of interviews. Two big interviews. We got athletic director Scott Jones and our boys basketball coach, Abe Zeller. So obviously really excited to get a chance to talk to them. Yeah. Uh, pretty awesome interviews. I've actually already seen them. So I kind of had the inside knowledge here, but they're really good. So you definitely want to stay tuned to this. And Mr. Jones, great athletic director, uh, athletic director of the year, which is a positive yeah, right there. Very exciting. Kind of steals our thunder in this episode and kind of gives out all the highlights of this week so we're not going to waste a lot of your time right no not at all i mean just kind of want to say again right just kind of looking ahead that the girls basketball team is going to be playing the state farm holiday classic over the christmas holidays boys are going to be in the peak and holiday tournament but aside from that i think mr jones is going to cover pretty much everything else he nails it so anytime as always you can reach out to nfhs network searching for some of these various tournaments clutch sports illinois a uh, great shot right there they're going to have some of those games uh, as well so and always be following uh, at potter's basketball uh Lady Powder Domination on Twitter. Both have all those upstanding scores right there. And you can always follow uh, Mr. Lindley here, who's going to be at a lot of these games. Absolutely. And I'm excited to see both teams play. And then, obviously, again, Mr. Jones talk about a wrestling off to a great start as well. Everybody is. So, without any further ado, we're going to turn it over and let's hear from uh, Mr. Jones right now. Thanks. Welcome back here to our MPTV Coaches Show. Ryan Lindley here with Morton High School Athletic Director Scott Jones. And let's start with this. I mean, the fall season, right? Look back a little bit first. Fall season, I mean, obviously a lot of really successful moments. You think about volleyball in the state final four, yeah. cross country, another great year, all sorts of, you know, football, obviously really successful. Just kind of talk about the athletic department as a whole coming out of the fall. Yeah, absolutely. We, we had an amazing fall season, Ryan. Um, volleyball, obviously uh, making the run to the final four. And, you know, people go back to that sectional championship championship against Metamora um, and just what a, a, a monumental um, part of the year that was and, and what an accomplishment was but then you know sweeping uh, Providence and getting a little redemption from the football season and, and really in the in the state championship games I mean we went to extra points every set lost by two when we did lose every set it was amazing it was it was just a great run uh, football finishing you know going eight and one in the regular season just having a great a, a great year um, tons of progress in the program with Coach O'Neill and everything happening there. Uh, boys golf was another one that just kind of came out of nowhere, won a conference championship when people really were not expecting that. And so uh, seeing a lot of our kids, a lot of our fall programs overperform. Um, again, soccer is another one. Great season. Great. Um, gosh, unfortunately, lost that, that regional championship and two overtimes and penalty kicks. But again, it, 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 we never wanted to overshadow what was really a fantastic year for the program. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a believer that, I mean, I know you can't play forever, but I feel like shootout penalty kicks, those types of things are just so unfair when, you know. <laughs> absolutely. It's probably the worst way to lose a postseason game or yeah. match that they can ever have. And I really, I'm not a fan, but again, that's the rule we knew yeah. going into it. Um, but again, you don't want to dwell on it. You really, I, I really want to, to dwell on the, the great season they had, the progress, the, the huge numbers in our soccer program. Again, a lot of our sports, our numbers are up across the board, around 7% already for the entire year. Um, you know, in spring sports to come, we ex expect the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's focus on right now. Talk about winter sports just a little bit. Um, you know, it's obviously a super busy time, right? I mean, it seems like there's some event in the gym almost every every night. Yeah. But just kind of talk about maybe even from that, from your perspective, just kind of how that goes about facilitating everything and you know building that winter schedule too. Yeah, yeah. The winter schedules and, and the winter um, the logistics of hosting our winter sports are probably the toughest of anything we do. Um, we are very fortunate. We have of elementary schools to use. Uh, we actually just booked a function um, over Christmas break into the kiln over at the junior high because we have some construction getting started. Uh, but again, we're looking, always looking for more facilities to use because we don't want our student athletes having to be here till seven or eight o'clock at night. We want to get them into practices, get them home, get them fed, get, get them rest, get, you know, study time. We have to make sure that as an athletic department, we're being cognizant of those things that we're keeping our kids healthy. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And then just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, so far in this season, obviously we've had, you know, a number of home games, whatnot, but then kind of one of the exciting things about winter sports, at least basketball wise, is you get to see the teams go to holiday tournaments too. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we start with the girls um, right off the bat. They had another good win yesterday. They play tomorrow night against Manuel. Uh, they're 10 and three to start the season. Really great showing. And all three of their losses are to state top five teams in the state. So um, again, Coach Becker and, and, and Coach Nyson, uh, Coach Schmidt all doing a great job. 
getting things started. They're going to be going to the State Farm Classic next, uh, well, on the 27th. They'll start that rain, and whenever anybody's had a chance to go, we go see that down there, going to see those games, the tournament be part of all that. It's phenomenal. Um, obviously, the boys are going to be heading to the Peak and Holiday yeah. Tournament, and that they're the longest-running team in that tournament, which is outstanding. They're off to a 12-1 and start, really having a great season with Coach Zeller at the helm this year. Uh, love what they're doing, and so again, they should make a great run at Pekin, and I really do think they'll be in that championship game. They might be looking at a tough Mount Carmel team, but um, that's okay. That's that's what you're playing for. You want to play those tough teams and get that going. Yeah, so, um, and gosh, and as we go into wrestling, they're going to be heading up to Whitewater in Wisconsin for the, um, the tournament up there. They are, I think, oh my gosh, are they 9-0, and I think, right now in duels, uh, a second, a third place in some of their the big tournaments. So they, just our, our winter sports are off to an amazing start. A competition cheer with their first year starting this year. Uh, two championships already. Uh, Coach Gordon's got them going the right direction. Bowling, uh, <laughs> right. I think bowling 6-0. and I mean, like for the boys, the girls are doing really well. So we, we have a lot of great things and a lot of these new sports that are kicking off that are just being successful right Right out of the gate and we'd love to see it absolutely and then speaking of successful let's talk about you for a second here um so you recently picked up i think a pretty pretty substantial award athletic director of the year in this region now you'll be nominated for athletic Director of the year in the state as a result of that i mean obviously just kind of talk a little bit about how exciting it is to kind of get that recognition it, it is it, it, it was um very unexpected it was a great surprise um but to, to have your peers in and you know in and what we're doing in our athletics realm uh, recognize me for that, and and we'll put my name up for that, and then and then to be voted in for our region, you know, our district, um, you know, and I didn't realize. How, I mean, the district goes up from Galesburg down to Springfield, Decatur, Peoria. It's a it's a pretty substantial area. And when I looked at that, I was really, uh, like I said, very humbled. But also, uh, it's a huge testament to what our coaches and our student athletes are doing. The, the successes we have at Morton High School are, I mean, they're unparalleled in, the, in downstate Illinois. And uh, it's something that I, I love as we get those, you know, the state medals are a great thing, but I love when we come away from different things with sportsmanship awards. I, to me, that is every bit uh, something to celebrate for our, our kids and for our coaches. And so again, it's a testament to, to what our coaches and everybody else here is doing. So. Mm, fantastic. And then obviously kind of, you know, one of the other things that maybe people don't realize behind the scenes is you kind of oversee the opportunity to maybe grow and expand certain things or envision what the air athletic areas of the school might look like in the future. And yeah. so we did a officially get approved for some renovations. Yeah, we did. We had the, the bid openings and approval last night at the board meeting. And so, which is, this is really exciting. A lot of people don't really know the ins and outs. We are going to have a lobby and we're going to have a lobby that's probably just a little bit bigger than what the junior high has, their athletic lobby. Um, we're going to do some really cool things that, you know, with that as far as creating a hall of fame. Um, you know, when you see in the gym, in the Potter Dome, we see the retired numbers. It's kind of been a dream of mine for the last few years to move to a hall of fame uh, you know, retiring numbers are one thing, but I think a Hall of Fame really enshrines everybody for a, a much more permanent time. Uh, but I also want to offer, we want to offer it up to people outside of athletics. There's people who made great contributions to our school and our district that are not always athletes and coaches. And so we want to make sure that we recognize that. We're going to have a great Hall of Fame. We're going to do a touch screen there that we can have the history of all of our teams, cool. um, activities, all kinds of really cool things we're going to incorporate. All four locker rooms are going to be completely renovated. I mean, they are getting gutted to the core. All brand new showers, locker rooms, sinks, toilets, you name it. Everything's going to be new. Actually, we're going to have a concession stand that's built in, which is very nice. I thank the Lord for that and our <laughs> school board and everybody else. Um, but, you know, being the, the part of the design process yeah. for all of that has been an amazing thing. I love it. This is the third project I've done now with high school. Um, between our high school and a couple others I've worked at. And it's really something that's just fun to watch from a paper, you know, little 2D thing to, to a 3D, you know, renderings and all this kind of stuff. It's been amazing to be part of. Um, we're going to do some air conditioning in the East Gym, replacing that HVAC. And part of that is with the, the idea of down the line, that East Gym is going to be completely gutted, renovated, and become a competition gym. We're looking at 400 to 500 seats, um, bleacher seats, having, you know, being able to host volleyball in there with a the taller ceiling, which is a little lot taller than the Potter yeah. Dome, 
But again, something we can look at doing and then also possible renovations uh, down the line with part it's being set up for the weight room to be moved over to the east side of the building by the maintenance parking and then you know down the line moving the offices, all of our offices to that main entrance at the canopy. So that's going to be our hub of our school and kind of the heartbeat right there where everybody comes in, everything, you know, pictures, great things, just a, a neat area for people to enter our building and be proud of. So. Oh, that's awesome. I'm really excited to, to kind of see that. I'm just going to play around with that touch screen, see what that's like. I'm it like is, that really is exciting. Yeah, and some great schools. I mean, as people, you know, go traveling, Pontiac has got a great one. LaSalle, Peru, there's a lot of schools around that have these Hall of Fames. And, um, and again, it's just such a neat thing. And it'll be on, it'll be able to link it to our website to where people can just hop on and look at the history of Morton High School athletics, activities, um, see teams, see people who are in the Hall of Fame. And, and I think it's a better way for us to also just celebrate all of those folks um, having yearly induction ceremonies. Uh, and, and add a lot more than just maybe the nine people that are on the wall now. We'll be able to get up to you know a lot of people, and, and rightfully so. We've had a lot of great people come through our, our walls and our, our school. So that's awesome. We look forward to that. We thank you, Scott, for joining us, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back here, our MPTV Coaches Show. Ryan Lilly here with our head boys basketball coach, Abe Zeller. Coach, let me start with this. I mean, 12 and 1 so far, just a fantastic start in your first season here as head coach of the Potters. Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been a good good exciting start. Uh, I knew going in, uh, whether it was summer or in the start of practice, that uh, the depth we have on our team is, uh, is the best for sure I've ever coached, and uh, I knew that would make for uh, for hopefully a good a good group, and it's shown that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you know, one thing that we've talked about in the past, but again, obviously, some folks may be watching us that haven't had this discussion or haven't heard this discussion yet. Just you know, defensively, the intensity that you play with. I mean, for people that are in the gym, it's got to kind of jump out at them. Yeah, and we, you know, we talk daily, whether it's practice or on game nights, you know, controlling what you can control in defense um, allows that. I mean, you, you, can, you can bring energy and effort. You can, you can bring uh, playing hard on the defensive end, closing out with high hands, things that you can do every single possession. Um, and the guys have really bought into that. And uh, when you got five guys on the floor doing that, um, good things happen. And then, I mean, you've obviously we mentioned the twelve-one record, but I mean, a couple of what I would consider like significant wins. It's not like the twelve wins were against weak competition. I mean, you've played really solid competition, right? I mean, obviously at the tournament of champions, but obviously the thing that stands out most probably is that win over Metamora. Sure. No, I, I mean the 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 group of varsity guys had never beaten Metamora at the varsity level. Um, up until that point and so I know for Gus and Evan and even Wes and some of those guys that have been playing varsity ball for a few years uh, they, they were they were motivated in many a ways but one was just to, to make sure we got one against them so yeah and that's it just makes it all the exciting as we'll talk a little bit in a second here about the future in the middle line but let's talk a little bit about coming up in the next week or so peak and holiday tournament I mean some tough competition there I mean obviously Mount Carmel's on the other side of the bracket but obviously they're they're the number one seed and you've got the number two seed I mean kind of talk a little bit maybe more about just the idea of obviously a long-running tournament. Morton, I think, is the longest, well, I guess the longest participant that isn't peaking in the tournament, but just, you know, that tournament in and of itself and getting a chance to play there. Yeah, no, uh, being my first year, I'm, I'm super excited to, to be able to play in a Christmas tournament in a, you know, neighboring neighboring town. That's a, an easy commute for our fans and for our team um, and, and a great field um, of the 16 team that are there this year. And uh, it's going to give us an opportunity to, to really see where we're at um, every game, um, especially round two and on, um, to be challenged to get some great competition, whether it's from the Chicago area schools or, or uh, you know, East St. Louis and, you know, just it, it, Moline and the, the other teams that are in it that are, that are proven winners year in, year out. And then kind of as we roll after the new year, obviously, again, you get back into that middle line schedule, a few other non-conference games in there as well. But maybe kind of talk about, because I think we saw it in the Metamora game, the Potter Dome when it's full and it's got that energy and the opportunity, obviously, to, you know, obviously in the second half of the year, going to host Washington, going to host Dunlap, going to have East Peoria for game ball run night. Just kind of the fun to see the Potter Dome filled up with that energy. Yeah, no, uh, I, I talk to the guys every time we have a shoot morning shoot around. You have a home game, especially like like home games mean something. It, it just it's just a little bit more enjoyable to play in front of your home home crowd on your home court. Um, and so just just not not taking that for granted. We only we only had, we had three three pre Christmas. We get eight after Christmas. So excited to have uh, a few more games in the Potter Dome and uh, 
and get that place rocking with the student section and just everybody in general. Absolutely. And then we'll get you out of here on this. Just kind of as you look, you know, probably kind of about a third of the way through the season, a little more than a third of the way through the season, if we look at number of games. What's something that maybe you feel like is critical going forward that you want to continue to develop with this group? Um, you know, when you, when, you have, when you have success, sometimes you can, uh, you, can, you can hear from outside voices about, you know, how good we are or, or, or each individual wanting this for them. And, and just, you know, we, I, we try to stress the we before me, just this, that, that we are having success, that we get to enjoy um, the wins and the battles and uh, um, just being together as a team and playing as hard as we can. And so just keeping that focus at the forefront, that control what you can control and uh, and just know that 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 whether it's success or or, or losing um, is, is always a wee thing. Awesome. Well, Coach, we appreciate you joining us. I'm excited to get into the Potter Dome and call a few more games after the, the holiday break. Folks, we appreciate you joining us. We'll be back after the holiday break for our next episode of the Coach's Show. So have a very happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye, everybody.